My wife and I were reborn on the day we registered our marriage. We walked out of the Civil Affairs Bureau in silence, neither of us mentioning marriage again. She chose to run off to distant places with her senior, chasing the freedom she longed for. I continued with my business, heading down a different path. Seven years later, she had become a renowned travel blogger in the country, the idol of countless women as a symbol of freedom, and I was still building my business. When we met again, she was sitting in her senior's luxury car, looking at me with amusement as I rode my bike to work. After all these years of hard work, you still can't afford a car, she mocked. I ignored her. Later, when the nation's goddess hugged me and called me her husband, she rushed in front of me and demanded, Kevin, how could you marry someone else? Chapter 1. Let's break up. Kevin, you're not worth marrying. Hearing Carolina's voice again felt like a lifetime ago. Seeing me stunned, she frowned in disgust and waved her hand in front of my face. This time, even if my parents forced me with their lives, I still wouldn't marry you. I snapped back to reality and silently nodded. All right, whatever you want. Seeing me agree without hesitation, a trace of surprise flashed in Carolina's eyes. Kevin, I hope you mean it. Don't cling to me anymore. I don't want to spend another 10 miserable years with you. I'm clearly a modern woman, yet I struggled in the cage of marriage for 10 years. Carolina glared at me, her voice filled with resentment. In this life, I'll be the main character of my own story. I will never disappoint William's feelings again. With that, she hurried away, her retreating figure full of joy, watching her leave. Her graceful figure gradually overlapped with the woman in my memories. It seems that Carolina had also been reborn. In our past life, on the day we registered our marriage, Carolina wore a plain white shirt, her long black hair draped over her shoulders. Her modest appearance somehow captured my heart, and I couldn't forget her for more than a decade. We had been high school classmates, and I had already felt something indescribable towards her back then. Being able to marry her, I thought, was fate. Even though we didn't have any foundation of love, I didn't care. After all, hearts are made of flesh, with sincerity, I believed I would eventually win hers. However, after the marriage, I realized I had been too naive. Carolina was cold to me, more distant than a stranger, I thought it was just her nature, but later, I learned that she had always had someone in her heart, that person was her university senior, William, her first love, William and Carolina were deeply in love during college, a perfect match, unfortunately, William came from an average family, and in his youth, he had committed some petty crimes, although he had turned his life around later, Carolina's parents still looked down on him as a potential son-in-law. So despite her pleas and even dramatic sacrifices, Mr. and Mrs. Lee refused to give in. In the end, under the pressure from her parents, Carolina chose her family and married me, and William became the unforgettable first love she could never have, a thorn in her heart. In our past life, I met William for the first time in the tenth year of our marriage, that day was the mid-autumn festival, and I was hospitalized with a perforated stomach due to excessive drinking at a work event. Carolina had brought some plain porridge from home for me, but when she arrived, she seemed lost, glancing at her phone anxiously. I struggled to sit up from the bed and asked with concern. Lena, is something wrong? Carolina frowned at me and snapped with impatience. Don't call me Lena. I froze, stunned by the coldness and distance in her tone, though I knew Carolina didn't have much affection for me. She had never spoken to me like this before. Her icy gaze felt like a knife, stabbing into my heart. Carolina seemed to realize her harsh attitude, and her expression softened slightly. Drink some porridge first. I have something to take care of outside. With that, she left without another word. I stayed silent, unable to muster the strength to ask her to stay. But later, I learned the reason for Carolina's drastic change in attitude. Because I saw her clinging to William, refusing to let him go. Carolina said she had sacrificed nearly 10 years of her youth for her parents, giving up her true love. William, can't you just look back at me? I've missed you so much. William sighed and replied helplessly. Carolina, you're married now and I'm half a public figure. What would people say if they saw us like this? I don't care. Carolina bit back her tears, her eyes red as she continued. Will you get back together with me if I get a divorce? William yanked his hand away and responded indifferently. I'm a travel blogger with millions of followers now. What kind of woman couldn't I have? Carolina, look at yourself in the mirror. What's there to miss about a housewife like you? We've been apart for 10 years. I've been chasing freedom while you've been stuck in the daily grind. We no longer see the world the same way. Chapter 2. From that day on, Carolina completely changed. She believed that the way William treated her was all my fault. So she began to hate me deeply. Even going so far as to sell the company secrets to others. She used that money to get into fitness, take care of herself, and reclaim everything she thought she lost during those 10 years. But no matter how hard she tried, she never got William to look back. In the end, on William's wedding day, 
Carolina drugged me and set the room on fire, planning to take me down with her. The pain of the flames woke me up, and I vaguely heard Carolina say, It's all your fault. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have been a housewife for ten years, and William wouldn't despise me now. I could only smile bitterly. Carolina always blamed me, never realizing that this marriage was her own choice and that she could have stood up to her controlling parents. What fault did I have? A sudden breeze blew away the clouds without warning, and the sunlight, which had been hidden, fell sharply on me. The warmth brought me back to my senses. Rebirth was probably heaven's way of showing me mercy, and I couldn't waste this second chance. From that day on, Carolina and I silently cut ties, but our wedding had been set for the next month, so our sudden breakup naturally met with resistance from her parents. At first, I didn't know how to explain it to relatives and friends. I hadn't expected Carolina to show up at my house with William, demanding a change of groom. This rebellious act infuriated Mr. Lee so much that he had a high blood pressure attack. But Carolina didn't care. You always try to force your ideas on me. I'm myself before I'm your daughter, and I have the right to choose my own life. I don't care if you die in front of me, I'll still be with William. Upon hearing this, Mr. Lee rushed at her, and an ambulance had to take him away in the end. This drama saved me the trouble of explaining the wedding cancellation to the relatives, even though they all looked at me with sympathy and pity. But now, I had no time to waste on Carolina or her family. There aren't many chances to be reborn, and making money is what's most important. In my past life, it took me five or six years to build my business, and things were looking good until Carolina leaked company secrets and caused it to collapse. But now, reborn ten years back, I wasn't going to miss the chance to start again. Plus, the internet wasn't yet booming ten years ago. The golden age hadn't arrived yet. If I invested early, I'd have no worries about money when things took off. With that in mind, I got to work right away. I didn't expect to hear from Carolina again while I was so busy. She and William had already made their relationship public. And every day, she flaunted their love on social media. But on the phone, Carolina's voice was frantic. Kevin, why didn't you help my dad find a doctor? You know he's not in good health. I couldn't help but laugh at her words. In my past life, at this very moment, Mr. Lee's high blood pressure had escalated due to Carolina's defiance, leading to heart failure. When I learned of this, I immediately pulled some strings to find the best local doctor and arranged surgery for Mr. Lee. But Carolina never once thanked me. She thought I was doing it to hold something over her. So in this life, I decided not to get involved. And now, Carolina was upset. Remembering this, I laughed even harder. Carolina, didn't you tell me to stop clinging to you? So why, after breaking up with me, do I still have to take care of your parents? Where do you get that kind of nerve? Then I hung up the phone and immediately blocked her number. Later, I heard that Mr. Lee's condition worsened due to delays, leaving him with slurred speech. Chapter 3 In the blink of an eye, seven years had passed. During these years, I had taken full advantage of my second chance and become a giant in internet media, raking in money. Today was a school reunion, and quite a few classmates showed up. I saw Carolina there, too, with William by her side. When one of our classmates noticed her, they quickly stood up to greet her. Oh wow, our busy celebrity is here, Carolina. I watch your videos all the time now. I'm so jealous of your life, traveling everywhere. Carolina's lips curled into a slight smile. It's just my job, but I do hope that every woman can break free from marriage and live a free life like I do. Today, eat and drink to your heart's content, everything's on me. As soon as she finished speaking, the female classmates started praising her in unison. I glanced at them and went back to eating my food. I hadn't eaten much at lunch today, so I was a bit hungry now. Since I had wrecked my stomach in my previous life from overworking, I took better care of it this time around. I had no desire to relive the agony of stomach problems. Just as I was about to continue eating, someone came over to disturb me. I looked up and saw Carolina, smiling sweetly, holding a glass of wine. Kevin, why are you so focused on eating? Is it because you haven't had good food in a long time? But I guess it makes sense. I saw you riding a bike to work the other day. You really don't seem to be doing well. And I couldn't bear it. As she spoke, she pulled a bank card out of her bag and tossed it. Landing right in my bowl. Oh dear. My bad. I wanted to help you out since you're having a tough time. But I guess the card's oily now. Don't worry. It'll still work. The password is 66666. And there's 100,000 yuan on it. Just consider it my support. Carolina was acting this way because. A few days ago. She saw me riding my bike to work. At the time, she was sitting in William's luxury car, looking at me with disdain. TSK TSK TSK. Kevin, thank goodness I didn't choose you back then, or I'd be stuck as a housewife again. All these years of hard work, and you still can't afford a car. I chuckled. Carolina, seven years have passed, and you're still as sharp-tongued as ever.
Carolina's expression instantly darkened. In our past life, Carolina always despised me for not being able to give her the life she wanted. But if it weren't for her family, I wouldn't have lost everything. Not even my parents' house. Carolina's parents were controlling and selfish. They raised their daughter to be successful for the sole purpose of landing a rich husband. After my parents passed away, I inherited a decent sum, which Mr. and Mrs. Lee saw as easy pickings. They did everything in their power to get Carolina to marry me. They treated me kindly and brainwashed me, making me believe that everything Carolina did was because she cared about me. But after my death, I overheard the Lee couple's resentment, that Kevin didn't have as much money as we thought. He's useless. Can't even afford a house for David. David. Carolina's younger brother. Whenever he ran out of money, he would ask Carolina for some, and if she refused, he'd scold her. Even though it upset me, I never said anything because I felt sorry for her. I thought we were a family, but to them, I was just an ATM. In this life, having cut ties with those leeches, my days couldn't be better. After hearing Carolina's remarks, the classmates exchanged awkward glances and offered me their sympathy. If I had married Carolina back then, wouldn't I be the one enjoying the good life now? I looked at Carolina and couldn't help but laugh out loud. Carolina, 100,000 yuan isn't even enough to buy this watch. Are you about to sign with Peak Media and get into acting? I had already heard from my secretary that a travel blogger with a million followers wanted to sign a contract and transition into acting. I didn't expect it to be Carolina. I pulled out my phone and called my secretary. Cancel the cooperation with that travel blogger named Carolina. William burst out laughing when he heard this. Caro, is your ex fiance drunk? Peak Media is such a huge company, and here he is pretending. The boss's wife is the youngest movie queen, Monica. Do you really think you match up to that? And by the way, the owner of Peak Media is named Luis. Since when did Kevin change his name? Chapter 4 As William spoke, he gave me a contemptuous look. Kevin, I know you're useless, but you shouldn't lie either. Carolina spoke in a low voice, disappointment written all over her face. Before I could respond, she turned away with William, sitting down with another group. Now, all of my classmates turned their eyes toward me, mixed with mockery and ridicule. I didn't care. I glanced down at my phone. It was a new message from Monica. Honey, my car is still in for maintenance, so I'll be a bit late picking you up. In the eyes of others, Monica was a career-driven powerhouse. Almost every movie she acted in won awards. Her flawless acting and stunning looks earned her the title of the nation's goddess. But only I knew how clingy this goddess was in private. Monica often hugged me and said I was the love of her life. We met five years ago, back when Monica was still an extra. At the time, I had just founded a media company, taking advantage of my rebirth. Monica was passionate about acting, but she had no connections and no background, making it difficult to chase her dreams. Such a pure-hearted girl was easy prey for those who exploited others. I met Monica at a club, where she had been drugged after being forced to drink. I felt sorry for her and was reminded of my previous life, where Monica became a movie queen only after struggling at the bottom for almost 10 years. I thought that if someone helped her, her path wouldn't have to be so hard. So, under the pretense of investing, I started supporting Monica. She didn't disappoint me. Her first movie was already a success. From then on, Monica's career skyrocketed, and none of her films ever flopped. She once told me I was her mentor, and she was my soulmate. Five years after we met, Monica won her fourth Best Actress Award and publicly announced our marriage. Shortly after that, we tied the knot because I liked to keep a low profile and didn't want too much information about me in the public eye. Few people knew who the real owner of Peak Media was. It was normal that Carolina didn't recognize me. Thinking of Monica, I couldn't help but smile. It had been a while since we last saw each other, and I found myself missing her a bit. I replied to Monica's message. Wife, I miss you too. I know you want to go out, so we can head out once you're here. Leave the company matters to Luis. After sending the message, I put my phone away, but just then, Carolina walked over to me. Kevin, do you know something? Why did Peak Media contact me to reject our cooperation? What's your real identity? Hearing her question, I laughed. I'm just a regular guy who rides a shared bike to work and can't afford a car. How could I possibly affect your career? Carolina let out a sigh of relief, seeming to believe my words. Exactly. Someone like you could never have any real connection to Peak Media. I must have been out of my mind to believe your nonsense. She muttered to herself, realizing what she said. Carolina shot me another disdainful look. Kevin, it's not that I look down on you, but you're already 30 years old and can't even afford a car. You're still riding a shared bike to work. You were at least a top student once. So how did you end up doing so poorly? She said in a heartfelt tone. Do you really want your wife to stay at home as a frumpy housewife? This is irresponsible, and frankly, disrespectful to women. Seeing Carolina like this, I knew she was venting her frustrations from our past life, but was everything as she claimed. 
In our previous life, after she and William split, Carolina hardly ever left the house. She didn't do any housework, either. Always waiting for food and clothes to be served, the allowance I gave her either went to her parents or to help her brother. Later on, she even complained that I hadn't made her into a rich wife, and that she didn't have several maids to serve her. And now, here she was confidently saying that I forced her to be a frumpy housewife and a full-time mom. What a ridiculous accusation. Chapter 5. I downed my glass of red wine, not wanting to waste any more words on Carolina. Someone like her would probably still blame me even if the world ended. I was about to argue with her when the door to the private room suddenly opened, and in walked Luis. He scanned the room for a moment before locking eyes with me. Kevin, you sneaky guy. So, this is where you're hiding out, coming to a class reunion without telling me. I was puzzled. How did you know I was here? Who told you? Luis rolled his eyes. You told me yourself last time. You said you'd be here at my hotel for dinner this Saturday. Forgot already. I guess all your brain power is spent on making money now. I furrowed my brow in confusion. As faint memories flashed through my mind, it seemed I had told Luis, but I hadn't thought much of it, so I forgot. Realizing this, I gave Luis a playful punch. Forgotten or not, why are you here? I'm here because Mr. Zhang is visiting, and of course, I had to come greet him. Anyway, no more jokes. I'm here with my girlfriend for dinner, and I heard your wife Monica is about to wrap up filming. Have her go shopping with my girl soon, I've been busy lately. Before I could respond, Carolina, who had been ignored all this time suddenly chimed in, Kevin, who is this? Hearing her question, I kindly explained. This is Luis, the owner of Peak Media, the company you wanted to collaborate with. Then I pointed at Carolina, she's the one I had my secretary cancel the contract with. Luis nodded in understanding, about to say something before his phone rang. He quickly excused himself and left the room. After Luis left, Carolina shot me a disdainful look. Kevin, why are you so desperate for attention? You must be panicking after seeing how successful I've become. So you're resorting to these cheap tricks, but your pathetic behavior only makes me look down on you more. And I'm even more certain that my decision seven years ago was the right one. She scoffed. Peak Media's owner. Really? You just heard us mention that the boss's surname is Chen. And now you bring in some random extra to pretend he's the owner. It's hilarious. Carolina's voice wasn't quiet. And a few of the classmates trying to cozy up to her also showed disdain on their faces. Kevin. We're all classmates. Why be so fake? Exactly. Carolina and William are the perfect couple, but you're just jealous and trying to interfere. If you ask me, Carolina made the right choice. If she had married Kevin, there's no way she'd be living such a good life now. William, emboldened by the classmates' praise, walked up to me and said smugly, Kevin, if you want, our company is looking for a security guard. I'll pay you 7,000 yuan a month, with meals and accommodation included. It's got to be better than riding a shared bike to work. Another wave of admiration erupted from the surrounding classmates. William. You're so generous. Kevin, you should thank him. William, you're a big shot. William, is there any chance you could give me a recommendation? Listening to their increasingly ridiculous comments, I couldn't hold back my laughter. I leaned back in my chair, lazily looking at everyone. William, I heard you started a small media company. Why are you trying to send Carolina to peak? Can't afford to support her anymore. Or are you going bankrupt? William's face stiffened, and he glanced nervously at the classmates staring at him. Then he snapped. Kevin. What nonsense are you talking about? Our company is doing just fine. Why would you curse us? I looked at William coldly. My secretary had already informed me of their situation. The real reason William wanted Carolina to sign with Peak was because their business was struggling, and they were deep in debt. Although Carolina was a well-known travel blogger and had gained many fans with her strong independent woman persona, there were limited ways to monetize it. On top of that, they spent money extravagantly relying on live streams and sponsorships to make ends meet, but their content quality had declined, leading to a loss of followers, and their account was even at risk of being banned. So, they were desperately looking for a new opportunity at peak, but now, it seemed like that door had closed. Seeing that Carolina and William were losing the argument, a few sycophants chimed in again, Kevin, you're just bitter, why can't you stand seeing them live a good life? Hurry up and apologize to William. William, seeing that everyone was on his side, grew more arrogant and said smugly. Kevin, since we were classmates, if you apologize, I'll let this go. I chuckled lightly. Apologize. You think you're worth it. Chapter 6. My bold attitude successfully attracted everyone's attention. People started to whisper among themselves, but I couldn't be bothered to care. At that moment, the door opened again, and this time, it wasn't just anyone, it was my wife, Monica. She wore an elegant long dress, her shiny black hair cascading over her shoulders. Monica's fame was undeniable, and the moment she stepped in, someone recognized her. 
Aren't you Monica, the Grand Slam Best Actress? Wow. Seeing her in real life, I'm a huge fan. Can we take a picture? I really love your work. Best Actress, who are you here to see? Isn't it obvious? It has to be someone from Carolina's circle, after all. Only the rich and powerful are here. Monica was surrounded by the crowd and could only greet them politely while her eyes searched for me. But there were so many people that she didn't spot me right away. Miss Monica. Let me introduce myself. I'm going to be the newest actor signed by Peak Media. We met at Peak before. And you even complimented me on my potential. Carolina said with her chin held high. Looking as proud as a swan. Wow. How long before I can be like Carolina? Just casually meeting someone as big as Monica. If Monica praised her. Carolina must be on her way to stardom. As whispers of admiration filled the room, Carolina's smile grew even more triumphant. But Monica furrowed her brow in confusion upon hearing her words. Who are you? I'm sorry, miss, but I don't recall meeting you. I've been busy filming recently, so you must be mistaken. Monica's words instantly silenced the room. I couldn't help but laugh, and in the sudden quiet, my laughter stood out, echoing loudly. Hearing it, Monica's eyes lit up immediately. She pushed through the crowd, and as soon as she saw me, she rushed over and hugged me. Honey, I've missed you so much. Monica's actions were like a bomb going off in the room, sending shockwaves through the crowd. William was the first to recover, quickly stepping up to Monica and saying cautiously, Miss Best Actress, how can Kevin be your husband? Isn't your husband supposed to be the boss of Peak Media, a man named Luis? Monica's face turned cold. Do I not know who my own husband is? Luis is a shareholder at Peak. He's the one who handles external affairs. Then she playfully pinched my cheek. My husband's a bit of a social recluse. If I hadn't dragged him to this reunion today, who knows how long it would have been before I could introduce my handsome husband to my fans. While Monica had many fans in the entertainment world, hers weren't the obsessive type. Instead, they respected her, mostly admiring her for her career. It was no secret that I had supported her success, and her fans affectionately called me brother-in-law. But I didn't like exposing my personal life to the public, so it had taken me a long time to be comfortable revealing our relationship today. Carolina. Stunned by the sight of Monica and me being so intimate, quickly stumbled over. Why? Kevin, how could you marry someone else? Why didn't you tell me that you're the boss of Peak Media? Were you playing with us all along? Monica had effectively confirmed my identity. After all, even if Luis was a hired actor, there was no way a national idol like Monica would sacrifice her reputation just to put on a show for someone else. But as I listened to Carolina's endless questioning, I lost all patience. Carolina. I told you from the beginning that Peak wouldn't work with you. If I had known earlier that it was you negotiating for the deal, I wouldn't have let you through the door. And as for why I married someone else, well, I love Monica, and she loves me. Chapter 7 I don't believe you. You've been lying to me. Carolina shouted in a frenzy. How could you be successful? You were supposed to live in poverty for the rest of your life. You're just a liar. You could barely support me. So how could you possibly be the boss of Peak Media? I don't believe it. Hearing Carolina's words, Monica's face darkened. Miss, please don't spread lies. I know what kind of man my husband is, and he certainly wouldn't be interested in someone as mean and bitter as you. Oh, now I remember who you are. You're the woman who abandoned her parents in the name of freedom. But taking all your father's medical funds and running off, if that's your idea of freedom, it's nothing more than selfishness and hypocrisy. Monica's quick tongue didn't hold back, and her words left Carolina speechless. At that moment, the door to the private room opened once again. Carolina's eyes widened in shock, and she cried out. Dad. Mom, why are you here? Her words instantly drew the attention of everyone in the room. How did you find this place? Carolina stared at her parents, who, after seven years, had aged significantly. The once well-kept hair of her mother had now turned almost entirely gray. Carolina seemed confused, not understanding why they were here. But before she could react, Mrs. Lee raised her hand and delivered a heavy slap to Carolina's face. Ungrateful daughter, how dare you ask why we're here? You took your father's medical money and ran off with this man. You two are living the high life, but did you ever think about us? I must have been cursed to give birth to a daughter like you. Monica was right. Back then, Carolina had taken the money meant for her father's recovery, leaving him paralyzed and half-disabled. Her younger brother, David, turned out to be just as useless, and Mrs. Lee had to take on a job washing dishes just to support the family. After becoming a social media influencer with millions of followers, Carolina had blocked all contact with her family. Seeing Carolina stunned into silence, Mrs. Lee delivered another slap. Look at how we're living and look at you, living in luxury, growing younger and plumper by the day. Then she kicked Carolina's leg, forcing her to kneel. Mom, I know I was wrong, but if it weren't for your preference for boys over girls, I wouldn't have ended up like this. Carolina glared angrily at her mother. Ma'am, 
Carolina's earning a lot now. She's a famous influencer. You'll be living a good life soon. I added sarcastically, Mrs. Lee, now indifferent to the fact that people were recording on their phones, began beating Carolina again. You disappeared without a trace for seven years. You're nothing but a curse. Now buy your brother a house and a car, or you'll regret it. Everyone loves to watch a scandal. If you don't come back and behave, I'll expose all the terrible things you've done. You can kiss your influencer career goodbye. Mom, how could you do this? Before Carolina could finish, another slap landed across her face. Shut up, you worthless daughter. I coldly watched the farce unfold, then pointed at William. Carolina, is this your great judgment? This is the freedom you've been chasing, the men you've loved for almost ten years, just standing there, letting you get beaten without lifting a finger. William, shaken by my words, finally snapped out of his daze and rushed over to help Carolina up. Caro, don't listen to Kevin. You and Auntie can talk this out. No need to get physical. His attempt to smooth things over was weak, and it only proved what I already knew. William was exactly the kind of spineless man my investigations had revealed him to be. Chapter 8. In our previous life, William had forced Carolina to abandon her family and elope with him in the name of so-called freedom. But what no one knew was that he had only gotten close to her because he had his eye on her parents' savings. It was only when William found out that Carolina had a younger brother, the pampered prince of the family, that he couldn't stand the idea of dating someone who would always prioritize her brother. That's when he made a hasty exit. In this life, Carolina took a large sum of money and left with him voluntarily. She used her rebirth to her advantage, quickly becoming a self-made social media influencer. She made money and obediently catered to William's every whim. Otherwise, someone as fickle and opportunistic as William would never have stayed with her. Yet Carolina didn't seem to mind William's earlier indifference. Instead, she turned her gaze toward me after hearing what I said. Kevin, did you call my mom here? Why are you so evil? Always trying to ruin my happiness. I couldn't help but burst into laughter. Carolina, don't make yourself out to be the victim. Your mom came to find you, that's your own business. How is it my fault? Besides, your mom isn't wrong. Those are the parents who raised you. After all, in our previous life, most of our money had been taken by Carolina and given to her parents. When I got sick and couldn't even afford the hospital bills, I had to plead with Carolina. Since her family didn't seem to need much money, I asked if we could keep a little for ourselves. But Carolina just glared at me in annoyance. Kevin, those are my parents who raised me. They're old now, and they deserve to enjoy life. You're young. Just take some medicine if you're sick. Why are you so fussy? It's just a little money, and look how stingy you are. Back then, Carolina looked down on me from her high horse acting as if her parents had suffered terribly, but now that she's been reborn and is making money, she's suddenly too stingy to give much to her own parents. She even complains about giving them a thousand yuan in living expenses each month. Isn't that the ultimate double standard? Carolina's face turned red and then pale. I know how to take care of my parents, but Kevin, you shouldn't have called my mom here. You just wanted to embarrass me. It seemed she was convinced that I had called her mom, and no amount of explanation would change her mind. I was about to leave with Monica. There were too many people here and continuing this argument was pointless. But Monica stopped in her tracks, pulling her hand away from mine. I turned around and saw her standing in front of Carolina, a mocking expression on her face. Miss Lee, right, I don't know why you're so sure that my husband is the one making your life difficult, but as a woman, I have to tell you, if you build up too much of an image for yourself, it's bound to collapse. I've been married to Kevin for almost three years, and he's nothing like the men you've been describing. Monica's words were an indirect way of standing up for me, immediately. The people who had mocked me earlier came rushing over, eager to curry favor. I knew Kevin wouldn't be doing that poorly. He was the top student in our class back then. Kevin, we've known each other for so long. Does your company need more people? I never believed what Carolina said in the first place. It's just that there were so many people around, listening to their attempts to flatter me. I felt nothing but disgust. Just moments ago, they had been stepping on me to please Carolina, and now they were acting like nothing had happened. I didn't want to waste any more time on them. So I turned around and started leaving with Monica. But just as we reached the elevator, Carolina came running after us. Out of breath, she stretched out her arm to block me, biting her lip. Kevin, how are you so successful in this life? You were supposed to have nothing. I stopped and turned to look at her, speaking slowly and clearly, because this time, my wife is Monica. She loves me, she's kind, and she didn't cling to a memory of her first love while forcing her husband to sell their home just to clean up her family's mess. And most importantly, Monica isn't like certain women who can't stay loyal and even end up personally causing someone's death. Carolina froze, her face going pale, fear slowly filling her eyes as she stared at me in disbelief. You, you've come back too, haven't you? You've been reborn as well, haven't you? She shook her head frantically, trembling all over. I should have known. I should have known. 
At that moment, Carolina finally realized that I, too, had been reborn. Chapter 9 Monica and I went home together. On the way, I told her a story. Once upon a time, a man loved his wife deeply, believing that if he treated her well enough, she would appreciate him. But in the end, the man lost everything. His wife killed him, and then they were both reborn. Back to 10 years ago. So, they made different choices in this new life. After finishing the story, I blinked my stinging eyes, about to say more. But Monica held my hand tightly. Honey, the past is the past. We can create a better future. Monica wasn't stupid. She could see that there was a past between me and Carolina. And given how smoothly my business was running, it was almost as if I had known what would happen all along. I took a deep breath and spoke to her seriously. Monica, I never wanted to hide anything from you. I just didn't know how to explain it. But please believe me when I say that I truly love you. The reason I didn't want to go public was that I was afraid your fans would think I wasn't good enough for you. Can you forgive me? Monica shook her head gently and smiled. Honey, I don't care about anything else. The only thing I love is you. Monica didn't ask anything more. Just like she said, the past couldn't be changed, and the future was bright and promising. We took advantage of Monica's break and went on a fun trip out of town for a few days. But as soon as we got back, Luis told me that Carolina and I were trending on social media. For the past few days, Monica and I had turned off our phones so we could focus on each other. When we got online, I finally understood what Luis meant. It all started when someone posted a video of the class reunion. People were amazed that Monica's husband had finally shown his face in public. At the same time, others were busy tearing down Carolina, whose carefully crafted image of being a woke, independent, cultured woman had completely crumbled. It turned out she didn't even take care of her own parents. Because Carolina had so many brand deals, the companies began demanding compensation from her. In just a short time, she had lost every penny she had earned over the years. On top of that, William hadn't paid off his gambling debts. And soon enough, the two of them became public enemies, hated by everyone. Then Monica made a bold move by posting a picture of us on her social media with the caption, To my sweet fans, here's the husband I've kept hidden for three years. I'm finally showing him off. Please don't roast him, he's got a fragile heart. Her fans, who called themselves notes because Monica could do everything well except sing, loved the post. Monica's post pushed our story and Carolina's to new heights. And when my assistant released evidence proving that Carolina and I had no connection, her fans went after her even harder. With that, Carolina's dream of breaking into the entertainment industry was officially shattered. She had been a guest on a few variety shows, but now the shows were either delayed or pulled from the air. Fans of the other celebrities and influencers on those shows were furious and made sure to let their voices be heard. Seeing Carolina in this state, I felt satisfied. After all, all those high-priced breach of contract clauses she signed were part of the plan I had set in motion. Carolina had killed me in my past life, and I had never forgiven her for it. I thought Carolina had disappeared from my life for good, but just a few days later, she showed up outside my company. Her face was haggard, dark circles under her eyes, and she was about to kneel before me as soon as she saw me. It was obvious that she had been going through hell. Kevin, we were married for 10 years. We've known each other for almost 20. Can't you help me, just this once? I'm going crazy. The debt collectors are after me non-stop. My mom is even forcing me to marry a 60-year-old man just so my brother can buy a house. I'm only 27. How did my life become such a mess? Chapter 10. Watching Carolina cry with snot and tears streaming down her face, I instinctively took two steps back to put some distance between us. I was disgusted. Carolina, when you were 30, you lived a life of luxury, and yet you complained about being a washed-up housewife, living a terrible life. I looked down at her from above. My tone flat. From where I'm standing now, that life seems a lot better than the one you're living today. But isn't this what you wanted? You were willing to kill me for William. And now this is your punishment. Even after being reborn, your mind is still fixated on that man. Don't you realize William was the one who tricked you into signing those contracts? All the money you lost went through your hands. Not his. You're the one deep in debt. Not him. If you want someone to save you, go find William. Carolina stared at me in disbelief. Her eyes wide. That's impossible. William wouldn't do that to me. He loves me and only me. He said he was out raising money. Carolina. I'm sure William's been missing for a few days now. Hasn't he? I didn't need to say anything more. She already understood. There was no point in continuing the conversation. I got into my car and drove away. Leaving Carolina far behind. Shrinking into nothing more than a tiny black dot in the distance. The next time I heard about Carolina was on the news. After being forced by her parents to marry a 60-year-old bachelor. She suffered unbearable abuse and ended up killing the men. Then, under the cover of night, she grabbed the butcher's knife and stormed into her parents' house, killing her three closest relatives. By the time the Lee family's bodies were discovered the next day, 
Blood had flowed from their home out into the street, and Carolina had vanished. When the police finally caught her, they found her lying beside William's lifeless body, smiling crazily as she muttered. I made the wrong choice. I want to start over.